Hi everyone, it's Henry here. Now Games Workshop recently sent us the new Seraphon Army launch box, so I thought it'd be a great opportunity to do a classic army painting video where I take a couple of the Saurus, we look at ways that we can get a great looking army on the table in a reasonable time frame, and I absolutely loved painting them, so I decided to do two. Now let's paint. Both the schemes I've worked up from a Wraith Bone Spray undercoat, which if you're a hobbyist of my era, when you got into the hobby, it smells just like smelly primer. I don't know if you remember that stuff, but it's basically this sort of off-white, ever so slightly ivory coloured primer. And it's fantastic for what we're going to do with this paint job on both the colour schemes, where we're going to start bright and work our way down. Now I'm using an airbrush here to get the first base coat um, of colour on the model. It's absolutely not necessary. It's just really, really quick. I've got the tool, so I'm going to use it. And I've started there with Plague Bearer Flesh Contrast Paint. Now I'm going to get the same Plague Bearer Flesh Contrast Paint and some Contrast Medium on my palette and we're going to thin that paint down using the medium. Now we're going to start traditional brush painting. So the only reason, as I say, just to reiterate that I used it in the airbrush, I used it uh, in the airbrush, a couple of drops of airbrush thinner, 25 PSI, just a really quick way to give me a smooth, solid base coat that might have taken me one or two goes with the contrast with a brush. Um, and if I was batch painting an army, that will save me quite a lot of time. So that's why I would suggest doing it if you've got access to that. And now we're going to go in with the contrast paint. Now you see here I've got a large brush. This is a size 4 uh, by Artis Opus. So it's, it's a big brush. It's got a big old belly on it, which means it can hold tons of paint. And in this instance, that's really, really useful to us. Now bear in mind, if it's going to hold a lot of paint, then paint may flood off that brush quite easily if you press it too hard onto the model. Uh, so I found the more and more I'm using contrast paint, the more I like it. And, and let's be honest, things like demon models and lizard men like this are absolutely perfect to get the most out of contrast in my opinion. I've diluted it with the contrast medium quite heavily, at least 50-50, probably more like two parts contrast paint, to one uh, contrast medium to contrast paint. Um, but it's just on my palette and I'm just mixing it around. But the reason I'm doing that is I want to apply it in multiple layers. I want to build up the effect. And I'm really, really conscious with my brush stroke that each time I'm trying to end the brush stroke in a recess. So we don't get where we lift the brush off. We don't get a pool of that paint sitting on a flat area where we don't like it. And the nice thing about contrast paint as well is there's a little bit of wiggle room um, with regards to your working time. So if you do get a little pool of it somewhere you don't want it, as long as you catch it, within sort of five, 10 seconds, you can just sort of shift it around and move it into a recess um, without any problems. And I'm going over uh, the, all of the, the soft flesh here uh, on, on the skin. I'm not worrying too much about the scales. That's already got uh, a coat on there. And as you see pop up on the screen, I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone that supports us over on Patreon. Your likes and subscribes here are awesome and they do really help. But those of you supporting us over on Patreon mean that myself and Andy can create a video on here, a video over on Patreon each week. We're absolutely loving working on these projects. We feel very privileged to do it. Um, and it, it's all down to you lot. So thanks ever so much for that. Um, he's currently working on another incredible Golden Demon entry at the minute. Um, which you will see in this weekend's upcoming Whammer Fest. Um, so once that was dry, I'm now going to move on to the next colour. This is another contrast paint. This is Mantis Warriors Green. And this is the colour I'm going to use for the scales on the model. So the Plague Bearer is the, the fleshy parts, and now the Mantis Warrior is for the uh, scales. Again, I've thinned it a similar amount. Uh, if in doubt, I'd rather thin it too much. And very, very deliberately here with my brush strokes, I'm being careful not to get it onto the fleshy areas. And I'm also trying to work most of my brush strokes towards the spine. So what we end up creating, and you can create it really quite easily with contrast paint, is nice smooth transitions um, between colors. Um, th the medium is helping with that. I think it's basically like a satin medium, um, but it's, it's really helping sort of um, blend those colors together uh, quite easily. So I've done one coat there. Um, in the end, I ended up doing, I think three. Um, this is the second coat. I'm being a little more slapdash with this one because I'm only really, I'm not aiming towards any of the edges here next to the, the flesh. So I know that as long as I end it roughly uh, in a recess, it'll be absolutely fine. And this is just to get a stronger color. 
I do find that contrast paint goes on better over a layer of paint underneath it, not just contrast paint underneath it, but a, a normal acrylic paint underneath it. And here I decided to use uh, another contrast paint, Eldar Eldari Emerald, um, to uh, further work towards the spine to give us some more exciting colors. But I wanted the actual spines themselves to be this color too. And you'll notice it works great on the scales, but the spines, you get that slightly blotchy look that I find you do get with contrast if it's over a flat surface of any significant size. So what I've done is gone back in and I've taken a normal acrylic paint. This is Cabalite Green, and I'm just going to base coat the spines in that. As I say, the contrast paint on the scales is absolutely fine, but I wanted a bit more solidity, for want of a better word, um, on the scales. Quite a few of the spines on this one are covered in gold anyway, so not too worried about it. So once that Cabalite Green was dry, I then go back in with the Eldari Emerald and I carry on layering it up each time, just working slightly closer towards the spine. So I would have put the Cabalite Green on before I even started any with the Eldari Emerald, just for what it's worth. But the key take home re here really is the thinner um, diluted contrast paint with contrast medium and always working in towards the spine and lighter colors to darker it's ever so simple. Um, it's it's very relaxing. It's very rewarding, which is kind of what you want. Now, an additional step I've done, you may want to or not, um, I've taken Ice Yellow, which is a very, very light yellow color by uh, Scale 75, and I've just mixed in the corresponding contrast paint to that to create a highlight for that stage of the paint job. Um, and I'm not going to do edge highlighting over the whole model, but I thought it'd be nice to do just around the face, that sort of focal area. I think it really was uh, worthwhile. Now, I deliberately left the face. Uh, I'm trying to be as neat and tidy as possible with this. I think it, it's a real benefit when you're doing this sort of type of paint job. Um, yeah, just neat and tidy. And I left the face uh, as clean as I could. And then over that, I've applied, a very again, another contrast paint, but very thinned out Magos Purple. This is just to give a sort of slight pinky tinge um, to a few areas, so I've gone for his knees, um, the sort of uh, what they called serratus muscles, I think it is, on his chest, um, and then a few more layers of it on the actual face itself. For the tongue, nice and simple, no more contrast paints, just proper, lovely, one of my absolute favourite acrylic paints, Barrack Noir Burgundy by Games Workshop. A couple of coats of that, and I'll highlight it by adding in a little bit of that ice yellow. I find when I'm army painting, and it's models like this, just having one or two colors that I'm gonna mix in to create a highlight color for a small area, it's just way more efficient than having a million and one paints. Um, you've already probably got loads of paints that you're using, so the more efficient we can be, the better. Um, and to that end, I'm gonna base coat the teeth using uh, Thondia Brown, and I'm then gonna use the same Thondia Brown color to base, paint, uh, base coat all of the rope. Uh, elements of the model. Then I'm going to mix in uh, a sort of yellowy brown colour called Japanese Uniform. Um, this one's by Vallejo Model Colour, but a lot of brands will make this colour. Uh, but it's just a, a yellowy brown colour. I'm mixing that into the Thondia Brown to start to create highlights for the rope. And there's actually little sculpted ridges in the rope. So I'm just trying to vaguely follow them. Even if I'm not hitting each one of them, I'm trying to do little dashes in the same directions just to help reinforce that. Now for the eyes, I'll take that same Japanese uniform colour to base coat the pupil. Then I'm taking Flash Gits Yellow by Games Workshop, so a nice bright yellow colour, but not terribly great coverage. That's why we did the Japanese uniform first. A little blob of that. And then for the pupil itself, it's a simple black sort of dot slash line slash V um, I've gone for. Um, I'm sure lots of people that like lizard men or seraphon probably like looking at pictures of reptiles. Uh, there's tons of cool eyeballs. Um, you can go and copy with that. Now for the red scheme, and I decided to do this as starborn rather than coalesced because why not? Um, two really fantastic ideas and having read through the army book, uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. Is it called an army book? No. What's it called now? Battle Tone. Um, it felt like reading one of the old army books. There's tons and tons of really good detail. Uh, and I really like what they've done with the Seraphon now, how they're setting them in the Age of Sigmar setting. It's um, it's really cool. I won't spoil anything, uh, but if you want to give it a read, I, I highly recommend it. Very, very similar process. We're just going to use different colours. So I've airbrushed on Dreadful Visage. Now I'm going to... Dreadful Visage? 
that how you say it? Sounds like a perfume. Visage, triple visage, whatever. This paint, uh, and then I'm gonna brush paint it on um, exactly the same way we did. So again, always thinking about the direction of my brush stroke uh, and the dilution of the paint. Then our first color on the scales is going to be Griffhound Orange Contrast. So there's one additional stage of color in this scheme, um, and that's simply because I felt the jump between the, the Dreadful Visage, the, the, the skin color, and the scale color was too, too strong with this one, whereas on the green scheme, it worked really well. So I've added uh, just a layer of orange, Griffhound Orange, uh, onto the scales. Again, being really, really careful now not to touch any of the fleshy areas, much more difficult to blend these two colors together than the greens and the yellows. Then for the main red color, using one of my absolute favorite paints, uh, Flesh Terrors Red Contrast. Now, I'm using a lot of contrast paints in this, obviously, and as I said, I think these sorts of models are absolutely perfect for them. I'm well aware other brands do their versions um, of contrast paint, um, so if you prefer to use them, by all means do, um, but I have a full set of contrast paints. I love using them in the airbrush mainly, um, but I do quite like using them as they were intended uh, when it's the right model. Now for the spines, I'm just base coating them Thondia Brown. It was a little bit too light, so I added a touch of black paint into it. Um, but yeah, just base coating them there in advance of then doing our final contrast color. So once that was dry, I'm then taking Rattling Grime um, and again, thinning it down and just mixing it in. If you ever get an area where it's it's too obvious, it's too stark, just mix the two colors together. The two, so if, for instance, Flesh Terror's Red and Rattling, thin it down and just glaze it over that area. Again, always pulling your brush strokes towards the center, towards the spine, and you'll easily just glaze it and blend it together. Now for the Starborn Made of Etheric Magic looking skin, um, super simple. Again, keep it clean, which means we can then just apply Talisar Blue Contrast straight over it. I've thinned this slightly less, but blue is such a powerful paint um, and contrast themselves are generally very, very powerful paints. Um, you know, it's still really quite full on. To highlight this, rather than adding yellow into it, I added a bit of verdigris. It's lovely, bright, uh, pale uh, green color, um, which added that into the Talisar and then started highlighting that up until I got to just the pure verdigris to give us that sort of glowy, sort of just weird look. Um, very, very simple to do and I think quite striking. Um, particularly in the Battle Tome, they've done it with much darker schemes on the flesh and the scales, and it's, it's very, very effective. But here they are, absolutely in love with them, determined to do a Seraphon army at this point, but I will finish those Slaves to Darkness first, see how I feel after I've done that, if I still fancy doing them. But if, if they bring out a Vanguard box for these, I am... Please, please write in the comments that you want to see that, because that'll then let me do it. <laughs> so, yeah, that would be a massive... Massive help if you would like to see that. And hopefully it's got some lizards and some griblies and a big monster or whatever. Um, all I did there was apply a coat of ultra matte varnish over them just to unify the finish. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the finish you get with uh, contrast paints. Now for the metals, uh, the first one, I've done a 50-50 mix of old copper and black metal to give me this sort of slightly bluey, coppery, pinky base. Um, then I have just stippled old copper straight over the top of it. Then a very heavy wash of a 50-50 mix of Agrax Earthshade and Pterodon Turquoise contrast paint. And just, if you do see it pooling anywhere you don't want it, like I said, you can just move it. Just end, either clean that brush off or end that brush stroke in the thing. You'll see I've done the vast majority of the paint work on these miniatures with this massive brush as well. Other than the bits around the face, really, I've just used the big brush nearly the whole time, which is great, um, nice and efficient. Then once that's dry, do a little edge highlight with pure copper. These are all by scale 75, these metallics, lovely set of metallics, um, lovely pinky copper color, this. Uh, and you can see because we've really dulled that metal down with the previous wash, this uh, little edge highlight really brings the bright and the shine back. Uh, and then to push that one step further, you can use Moonstone Alchemy just for a few little spot, little dash highlights. Um, just to, again to pump that up. I think you could have an awful lot of fun with the different metals uh, on Lizardmen. Um, just such an exciting army on the tabletop, I think, to look at. The gold, we can do much, much simpler. I'm going to base coat it using Necro Gold. I figured two metals was enough, like one metal for the weapons and then a different coloured metal for all the little doodads. Um, 
don't need to go crazy. And then a highlight, I'm going to use Peridot Alchemy. Lovely bright green gold. No washes here. I thought it would be nice to have that different level of contrast between the two metals. Um, yeah, and I, I love that shine you get off it. And here they are together. Uh, the base I've just done very, very simple. I nicked it off the uh, scheme or the, or the method that Andy used when he was doing his little Underworlds warband. So I'll pop the link up um, to how he's done that uh, at the top of the screen now. But yeah, what wonderful models to paint. I had so much fun doing this one. It was super relaxing. Um, I think if you are a Lizardman fan or you're jumping on this, you're going to have a really good time. They were a pleasure to build as well. Um, I am really really impressed um with this kit i haven't been with some recently this one i think is is fantastic so i'm really really pleased for any of you that are going to pick this up because i think you're going to have a fabulous time uh painting them up so if you've got any questions about anything i've done uh, in the video just pop them down in the comments and i'll do my best to get back to you when i can like i say i'd love to revisit the lizards in the future and look at a few of the different uh, models and and different bits and bobs we could do to them uh, so if you'd like to see that let me know in the comments as well if you aren't already hit that subscribe button and if you've enjoyed the video hit the like button because it really does help us out and i'll see you next time if you've liked any of the models in this video and you fancy having an army of them yourself, but perhaps you don't have the time or wherewithal to get it done, consider dropping us an email at commissions at cultofpaint.com and maybe Ben can sort you out.